Okay, at the start of any project like this, using a big slab, big live edge slab that's been air dried or kiln dried, getting it completely flat. Uh, the best practice really is to kind of wedge it on one side till you feel you've got the overall level at the top kind of consistent. Then take a skim off the top, keep checking it. When you get it almost flat, you see me checking it here, I'll then flip it and I'll do the bottom and get the bottom completely flat based on the top. And then again, you do your final pass on the top. That way you're taking an equal amount of wood almost from both sides, but you're also referencing the top from the bottom, which is ideal. We design and build everything in-house. We do not buy legs in and each leg or base is actually cut specifically for the slab so that the mounts are just in the right place. Quick test fit before we fit the adjustable feet and the brackets to fit to the table. So it's a really good idea, if you can, to leave everything for about a week, five to seven days between each process on the wood, just to let it climatize, you've removed material in the router sled. So I usually like to leave it about five or six days and then give it a pass um, through the wide belt sander before I do the resin. That really gets it good and flat. As with all of these types of jobs, it's really all in the preparation. Some of these slabs take me a good day to prep, some of them take even longer. Okay, I often get asked about the pigments. This is all from Glasscast website. I'm using copper and bronze. As always, I am not measuring this out. I'm doing it by eye, and I've had a lot of discussions with the client about what they like. So that's kind of the way I do it. So I often get asked about when do I kind of agitate or make patterns in the pigment. You can see here sort of how viscous it is. It's pretty wet, but it's, there's some resistance on the piece of wood there on the little spatula. Um, you just keep, keep your eye on it. You'll get used to the feel of when it will stay and when your patterns will sink away.
So a little trick on the resin work can get a little bit of damage on the edge of the brushes with all the sharp resin. So I put this tape on. So this is just like the uh, weaved packing tape. I've got some yellow tape underneath it uh, and weaved packing tape. And that's kind of um, just takes the brunt of it and you can just keep changing the tape, it really helps. You can also put a little skirt on as well, a little extra bit. Just rubs nicely on the wood, keep some resin out of your face. So I do sell this system, this complete rig, where you can have your router sled um, and the rail system. There's a link in the description for a form to get a quote. This is actually the BS105, which is the festival's belt sander, and it has this kind of frame on it. So it is absolutely phenomenal for keeping things flat. And when you're doing this heavy cutting back, you can go like a 120 grit on here and just go all over, and it just really keeps everything flat and level. So you definitely still need to use a random orbital with resin just because of the marking. But if you're removing a lot of material, uh, like a couple of mil when it's been through the wide belt sander, this is definitely the way to do it and it means you don't have to worry about digging in, the machine keeps itself flat and level. So I work for all the grits from about 120, depending on the finish, up to 400 or 320, depending on what oil or finish I'm using. Okay, so this is Odie's oil I'm using for the finish. I really like this. I do it in two stages. I use super penetrating first to get it right into the grain. You've got to leave it for a minimum of 45 minutes. I sometimes leave it overnight. Uh, buff it in with a scotch bright pad, let it soak in, then completely buff it off with a terry towel in. Uh, towel or puff buffer. Um, it's really good when you've got a lot of resin, Odie's, because it's very forgiving on the resin. It polishes the resin beautifully, but it doesn't create any kind of stickiness or anything that's difficult to work with, which can sometimes happen with hard wax oil. Okay, this is the second coat, possibly the last coat of Odie's for me, it's be Odie's dark oil. 
and this is what I use as the finishing coat. So I'm just going to again very sparingly my new Scotch Bright pad. Okay, then we've got to the finishing stage, which is buffing it all off, making sure we're leaving absolutely none at all on the surface. I use multiple terry toweling cloths until they come off clean. Very simple, very quick. I've done a video on this, I'm using a brilliant cutter uh, from Tipman. Uh, it's kind of a up spiral, but with a, a serrated edge. Almost looks like something you'd put in a CNC, and it's brilliant at hogging out. And look at all this resin that's coming out, so quick and clean. 